Good morning, and welcome to our next presentation. Uh, our next presenter is Aura Minerals, and presenting on the behalf of the company's president and CEO, Rodrigo Barbosa. Rodrigo? Good morning, Derek, and good morning, everyone that is watching us. Thank you for the time uh, to be here with you. Uh, what I'm going to share with you is a few slides about uh, Aura Minerals. Aura Minerals is a company that has been listed in TSX uh, for a long time. Uh, recently, we did a dual listing also in Brazil. Uh, it, but uh, it, maybe it's a company that you haven't heard much about in the last four years. We've been very under low profile with the equity capital markets because we were diligently doing a very three years uh, turnaround the project, uh, rethinking about the strategy, rebuilding the portfolio, uh, reconfiguring the balance sheet, strengthening the balance sheet, and working a lot on the team and uh, the future of uh, running the business. Uh, you might have not heard about us, but I would uh, highlight a few points uh, of what we've done in the next few slides. It's a company that is coming from $50 million on equity capital value, very close to a billion in the last year. It's a company that's coming from 120,000 ounces of production in 2017. Last year, close to 180. This year is going to be uh, 200,000 ounces. If it were not the, the, the paralyzations we had in the operations due to COVID, we are already at the, the running rate of 250,000 ounces, plus projects, brownfields and greenfields that will put us close to 500,000 ounces of production in the next four years. It's a company that also is coming from a daily liquidity, daily trading volume from five to $10,000 per day, now going up to $2 million uh, per day combined with Brazil and TSX, but still going forward and spreading out more shares and that was uh, 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 holded by few uh, minority uh, shareholders. So we are growing, improving liquidity and improving cash flows. We also recently approved a robust dividend yield that uh, we allow the shareholders to benefit from the cash generations that we are having from our own operation without harming the growth that we have. We recently did this dual listing in Brazil. We raised capital. So today we have a net debt, negative net debt, very strong cash position, not only to support the growth to double our size in the next four years, but also to pay dividends to our shareholders. So I will skip a few slides here. So you all received the presentation. Uh, I summarized uh, uh, more here to be able to present in 15 minutes plus five minutes as uh, questions. So today we are uh, a diversified a gold and copper mine. 80% of the revenues come from gold. 20% comes from, from uh, uh, copper. We have one gold mine in Brazil, EPP. We operate one gold mine in Honduras. Uh, we operate one copper and gold mine in Mexico underground. And then we recently acquired one gold mine in the United States that was just ramping up and we start production uh, by the end of the year. As I mentioned to you, uh, we are currently at the running rate of 250,000 ounces of production, plus gold road to the entity production by the end of the year, and then we will have full results by next year. We are increasing the capacity of Aranza Azul by 30% uh, this quarter, and will be fully accounted next year. We also have uh, 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 green field projects to develop in Brazil. Number one is Almas. Almas is a project that uh, will start construction early next year. We are just finalizing the, the new, new full feasibility study. This recent one that we updated and the, the published to the market, Almas, is a project that is giving approximately 110% internal rate of return per year, at which we start construction next year, fully permitted and uh, with all the reserves already published. Matupá is a project that we also have a green field in Brazil that we should start construction uh, in uh, mid or early 2022. We still have one year to develop the project, but once you start construction, it takes one year and a half, so it is in production in 23. We also have brownfield expansions that we are doing. EPP, for example, today we produce around 65,000 ounces of gold per year. Uh, we are developing uh, a, a mine very close to the plant, a new mine called Ernesto that we already recently published the, the, the results. That is going to provide us an ability to come from 65,000 ounces to 100,000 ounces uh, in 2022. Uh, gold Road, we start production by the end of the year. And we also, it's fully permitted and the plant has capacity to operate under double, under double production. 
However, we will still need two or three years of exploration to support operating under double capacity. Um, while all these projects that we have at Aura, uh, all the growth that we have on the projects of Greenfield or Brownfield, we also uh, allow us not only to increase production, but also to reduce our costs. The increased production in Aranza Azul gave us more scale, so we will reduce by economy of scale. In Brazil, the higher grade in OPP, in EPP, uh, will allow us also to operate under substantial lower costs that we have today. The new projects that we are developing, Almas and Matupá, it's already born uh, with a lower cash cost compared to the average that we already produce today. So what you'll see in Aura in the next four years is our production coming up, going up and the costs are going down a yearly by yearly basis. And um, being able also to pay uh, the dividends without harming the growth story. Very important point about Aura is that we recently did a unique dual listing in Brazil. Uh, Brazil, it's a very deep market on equity. A lot of, uh, it's the first time that Brazil is having a very low interest rate for the last 30 to 40 years. So there is a big move of capital that was being invested on fixed incomes, now moving into equity and looking alternatives to invest uh, in gold. So we could access first gold mine to access the equity capital markets in Brazil. That was a uh, close to $200 million of uh, uh, BDRs issued. Uh, one third of these came to, to the, for a primary uh, offering that came to our, uh, our cash to fund the projects. The other two thirds was a minority shareholders, not the, that sold, that was invested in Aura for the, for the last eight years. Last but not least, Aura is a company that has been hardly and diligently investing also in people and management, understanding that the best way to run the mines is to have a very clear way of the decision-making process, not at the central, uh, uh, the central headquarters, but being able to decentralize decision-making process to the mines while corporate needs to look very much of capital location, people and performance, and also coordinating the operation, but creating instruments that the people at the mine can make the best decisions how to operate that under, of course, the values that uh, we, we share uh, with all the employees. Um, this slide I already mentioned to you, but that shows the progress that we'll be doing in terms of production, 122,000 ounces, 18, 180, 19, 200,000 in 2020, understanding that 2020 was affected by COVID. If you get the second semester and you analyzed, it's gonna be close to 250,000 ounces. The third quarter production we already published, and we are not including here for next year. We still have Gold Road coming into production, 30% increase in Aranza Azul. Following year, Almas enters in production, and we have higher grade also of uh, EPP. So you will see consistent and robust growth on our production per year until 2024 at least. Uh, we bring here to you a case of Aranza Azul. This is a mine that we restart uh, two years ago, we ramped up uh, uh, last year uh, under all this new uh, management culture, decentralized, integrating more the people, have a clear targets, aligning the objectives. Uh, so we invested hugely in, uh, in a very stronger uh, plan so that we have a long-term view, short-term view, monthly basis, what's going to be the greatest, going to be the metallurgy, how we are going to integrate mine, geology, and plant. So this is all being very well connected at the site. And the results has been uh, very promising. Uh, we, if you compare uh, to the production that this mine had before shutting down in 2014, we are coming from production of 28,000 tons of concentrate to 43,000 of concentrate. The average grade was 0.86%. Now we are 1.40% on the grade of copper. Uh, the recoveries on copper, once you understand that the metallurgy and integrate matter, the better the mine with the, the plant and the geology, you increase recoveries from, from 80% to 88%. Now we are running already up above 90%. Recoveries of gold coming from 57% to 76% with upside to increase this as well. So when you increase better production, higher grade and higher recovery, we could reduce the cash cost by half compared to what it was operating in 2014. And with the same mine, same plant, it's a way better plant and a, uh, and a better management. 
few results that uh, where we're coming from from 2017 until uh, uh, the last year analyzed uh, the quarter because we were ramping up Aranzazu and the first and second quarter was affected by COVID. Third quarter results should be published very soon. Uh, so, but this is gives us an idea. So we could increase revenues. Uh, we could increase uh, the impact of EBITDA was substantial. We're coming from $20 million to $110 million. That comes from better production, better price. But also we sold the one project that was dragging cash from the company. It was too big for us to, to fund. It was a good project, Serote. We sold this to be able to reinvest the, the cash on our operations and also to develop the, the other ones. Um, in terms of portfolio, what is very interesting about Aura is that we have a very solid pipeline of growth, as, as I was mentioning since the, the beginning of the presentation. We have three operations running right now, one ramping up and should be declaring production uh, by the end of this year. So there will be four operations. Each of them has brownfield expansion capacity. And that comes from because Aura was hugely investing in, in Cerrote project and could not reinvest cash, developing understanding better what is Azul, San Andreas, and EPP. Once we divested of Cerrote, we could reinvest cash in those assets and understand about the potential. And we are now uh, increasing the capacity and cash flows from all of them. Then we have Alma's final process of engineering that we start construction next year. We have advanced exploration, which is now turning already to engineering and mine design, Matupa, uh, that uh, we'll spend next year on metallurgy. We'll spend a year also in engineering mine design to be able to start a construction by uh, early 2022. San Francisco, Toda Fria, uh, San Francisco's a mine that's been under carry maintenance. We've been doing a geological study to see the potential to restart. We don't know yet uh, uh, how we will be able to do so, but uh, we should uh, next year conduct and we are already starting geological studies to be able to see if we can restart the mine. So uh, it's a it's a project that we have in Colombia. We have close to 900,000 ounces of inferred and now trying to understand how we could develop. But we, yet we don't have a clear view when and how we would be develop San Francisco to the Fria. Until Matupa, if you take from Matupa to the left, you see that we'll more than double our size in the next four years while reducing the cash cost. In terms of exploration, uh, if you compare our to the peers and the, other, the average of the industry, you see that our life of mine is slightly or below the average. But that's not because we are running out of reserve. That's just because we have not done necessary geological exploration investment in the last five years. We started doing so only two years ago, and we are already increasing, increasing substantially our reserves. Even when you compare the total area that we are now mining to the areas that we have the right to exploration, Aranza Azul, we are only 4%, EPP 8%, Gold Road 6%. San Andreas, 10% of their almost 11 in Matupa. We don't have operation yet, but we should have very soon. So there is still, and we have plenty of geological information. I don't want to put all the all of them here, but you can access in our reports. But there's still plenty opportunities for us to improve our grades, improve our life of mine on geological uh, investment that we are doing and increasing every year. Uh, when you compare Aura uh, in terms of performance of uh, with the peers, uh, probably we far exceed most of the other peers. Probably we should be one of the best stock performers in TSX in the last 12 months. Uh, we increased by 854%. Uh, that is because we are starting harvesting the results of that uh, we worked in the last three years. And we also increasing substantially the daily trading volume on being able to attract new investors to our portfolio and also being able to do a dual listing in Brazil, which is very important. Now Aura not only can access, access capital in the Canadian market, but also access capital in the Brazilian market, which give us a lot of strength to continue to outperform the peers. When you compare uh, Aura and, uh, with, the, with the peers in terms of price for NAV, uh, price cash flows, EV for resources, you see that we are, and that no, those numbers was taken a little over a month ago, and, uh, and, for, and we uh, decreased, the, our share price has decreased 15% since then, so we are today above the average uh, uh, of the markets in terms of comparables, 
but not included, but still trying to give to the market that the while the average of the market is depleting and decreasing the life of mine and increasing the cost, will be increasing life of mine and decreasing the cost and growing. So all in all, um, in a nutshell, this is the case of our a company that has been diligently doing a lot of homework in the last three years, not very proactive with the equity capital market because we wanted to have a solid history to do what we are doing today, to do what we are doing right now with you. First time that we are very proactive with the capital market, telling our story so that you can hear, understand, and dive in on the details, right? We we'll, we have plenty of information on our website. We have plenty of information that has been published in the last six uh, months or, or year that all of you can have access and dig in the details. So I believe we have a very unique case. It's a company that will double the size in the next four years. It's going to reduce the cost, reduce the cost of operations. It's going to pay dividends, and it's also fully funded. All for all this growth. So we should not, for those projects, have a new issues of shares and dilute the market. So I will stop here. And uh, Derek, if you have any q and I'll be glad to answer any question. Great. Thank you, Rodrigo. That's a great overview. And I know with, with such a, with a, with, with a five operating minds, it's not, uh, it's, it's not easy to, to get through it in a hurry. So thank you. Um, the, uh, I think that, I think the key question or the key question that I have in what investors is that, Aura is unique. It's, it's gone through a very quick transformation. Um, it was hard work and now has a very aggressive growth plan, um, which, you know, what are the key things about Aura that make it ability, give it the ability to execute on that, the transformation you've done and the, the, the that, that aggressive growth plan that you, uh, that you have. Yeah. Thanks for the question. All companies to grow and uh, we, we, we communicate very clear. It's a simple strategy. It needs three strong pillars. You need to have good quality of assets, strong balance sheet, and a good team to perform and to, to invest in those projects. This is everything that we've been working in the last three years, and this is based on how we're going to grow. So we are today, we have almost fully permitted. We have Matupa that we have all the permits as well, and it's going to start in construction. We have the cash to build those projects. We are fully funded to develop them, and we have a team with the track record as an example of Aranza Azul that we are now running with the half of the cash cost that they were in the past, prepared to develop all those projects. Right. And I, and I think um, for Aura, it has a unique approach on people and how sites operate. And, and maybe you could talk about, about that, because I think that's something that's a, a breath of fresh air for the mining market for us, uh, for those of us who are traditional investors. And I think that's part of the, the secret of success for you guys. Yeah. Uh, we believe that the technical decisions uh, and the, the day-to-day should be taken by the operations. So we should delegate more decisions to the operations and decentralize from corporate office, give to the operations responsibility for cash flows and PNL. However, to do that's not so easy So you, because you need to create a lot of transparency of information, new KPIs, new performance measures, and a lot of integration for, within the team, right? So... Uh, the geology needs to be well connected with the, the mine. The mine needs to be connected with the plant, and the plant needs to be connected with the whole office. And uh, to do so, you have to hugely invest in the integration of the, the team, aligning of the incentives, putting a lot of effort uh, on meritocracy, making sure you have the best um, managers you can have, and also that the decision is being taken in the right places, not uh, going up unnecessarily that will just slow the process and not making it efficiently. Right. And I think that's, I think that's what makes, um, I think that's what makes it unique and why you can have growth on so many d- different fronts with the operations improving and building new projects, et cetera, that allows you to actually uh, uh, progress that way. Um, you obviously you released your Q3 uh, production results. When can we expect the, the financials and, uh, and then, and, and then uh, when can we expect the financials, which I guess would be the next big uh, news event for, uh, for Aura. Yes, uh, financial should be uh, around 12 November, 15 November. Okay. Perfect. And I think that's something for investors to look forward to. And uh, Rodrigo did a great job of going over the company very quickly in 15 minutes, but there's lots of information on their website to, uh, to dig in and learn more about it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rodrigo, for presenting, and thank you, everyone, for, uh, for attending. <laughs>